Good morning, this is Wayne Bilal with another Smart Profit Maximizing Moment. Um, today, Friday, hope you're having good plans for the weekend. Enjoy yourself. Work hard. You know, I um, work just about every Saturday morning, but I do take off Friday afternoon, so we're making progress. <laughs> today, we're going to talk about how to increase profits, one of the quickest ways, by doing an employee staffing review. Um, allergies, sorry, I thought I was going to sneeze there. First, let me do a better job introducing myself. I'm the one with the allergies. <laughs> My name is Wayne Belial. I'm the founder of a local CPA firm. Um, started it back in 1991, so we've been doing this a long time, focusing on, on helping other people, uh, other business owners, increase their profits. Um, passed the CPA exam way back in the late 70s, so really have been doing this a long time. So I've seen a lot of things. I've seen businesses succeed, fail, and understand what makes them, you know, what the key things are that help them be successful. All right. I'm gonna, uh, also the creator of the Smart Profit System, which we're going to go into more in the next few weeks. Um, it's part of the reason for these videos. I mean, we do, we really kind of focus on three things. One, we focus on helping business owners make more money, which is the idea behind these videos and teaching the Smart Profit Maximizing System. We help them cut their taxes with tax planning. Uh, in the last three years alone, we've saved them $4.3 million. That's $4.3 million worth of cash that did not go to the government to help them fund their retirement, um, pay off their college loans, pay off debt, buy a second home, reinvest in their business, whatever. <laughs> whatever they wanted, it didn't go to the government. And of course, we file tax returns. The tax returns we do, we make sure we, f as best as we can, we we f we file them as best as anybody can. We file them in a way that doesn't attract attention. Getting harder and harder. There's been some strange things going on lately. Anyways, I want to talk about increasing profits by doing an employee staffing review. Um, labor costs are probably the most expensive thing you're going to have as a business owner, no matter what. That. that even, it's going to be one or two, all right? If you sell a product, buying your product's probably going to be number two. I mean, it's going to be the highest, and it's going to be somewhere in there. Um, I just did somebody's financial statement, did an analysis. 80 cents out of every dollar went to product cost and labor, all right? Um, that's, it, yet, that's not where anybody spends any time. They spend their time looking at the telephone bill and cutting that, They, you know, which is fine. I mean, I'm a strong believer in keeping overhead under under control. But first, start with increasing labor. I mean, looking at your labor costs. Um, one of the things we do, and I'll probably teach this, uh, I'm, tr yeah, I'm not sure it'll squeeze into the, the smart profit uh, challenge we're gonna have, but um, one of the things we set up for my business owners is a salary cap. In truth, I'll give you the simple way to do it. You usually take your, your sales minus your product cost, that comes up with an amount, Subtract first the profit you would want to make, 10, 15, 20%, whatever that is. Then subtract your overhead costs, things like rent, utilities, things you can't control. And that leaves you with the most you can spend on labor and still hit your, your, product, your profit goals, all right? Now compare that to what you're actually spending on labor. As your business grows, it's, and it doesn't take very long. We're not talking about hitting 15, 20, 40, 50, 100 employees, though. I've never walked into a place that has more than 10 employees and not seen a place where they were overstaffed. But I've seen, I've had it happen to me with four people, all right, where, you know, last year, uh, 2018, at the end of 17, we got rid of something, we got rid of the bookkeeping part of it. Our sales dropped by $40,000, all right? But because of people that were not needed, all right, we were able to increase our bottom line by 90000 that's just me. I have another client who cut three hundred thousand dollars worth of labor, you know, and still, you know, and still made it obviously increase their profit by more than that. To be honest about it, because there's some other things they did. What you need to do is every year, you need to make sure that the employees you have and the products that you're selling contribute directly to the bottom line, and you need to do a staffing review at least once a year. You need to look at every job in your company to determine, to determine how it fits with the entire operation in accordance with your company's long-term goals. Well, you know, that sounds simple, except very few companies I deal with have long-term goals. <laughs> so what are you doing? Why are you hiring? I, just because? All right. I, and let's be honest. There's only two reasons to hire an employee. One, they contribute directly to the bottom line. 
or two, they make your life easier so you can go out and sell more and increase profits or at least just not work seven days a week. <laughs> All right, so they either make your life easier or they, or they contribute to the bottom line. There's absolutely no other reason to have employees. All right, contrary to popular opinion, it, it, a job is, from the business owner standpoint, those are the only two reasons. You're, you're not in business to create jobs, though that is the natural thing that happens as you grow your business. So you can get it backwards. But look at every job. Make sure it fits with your long-term objectives. Probe all aspects of the job. It's basic function, the level of work being performed. All right? It's relationship to other jobs and so on. There's a lot going on there in that one sentence that I said. I, I was at Magnolia Coca-Cola back in the, before I started my firm, so mid-80s to 91. Um, I analyzed every job, was able, to, I had the same number of, of employees when I quit as when I started. The difference was we were doing the accounting and, and the coaching and, and the, everything else that went with running the bottling plant for not just El Paso, but five other plants and had the same number of employees. Why? Because we were able to look at the, each job, not the person, the function of the job and see what needed to be done and what could be eliminated. You'd be surprised what creeps in. Now, if you don't have job t uh, functions and you haven't created what the job's supposed to do, surprise, you have job functions. It's just you didn't design them, your employees did. And that's what I found. There was, uh, we had like 6,000 customers a day. You know, I mean, it was ridiculous at Coca-Cola. And there was one process that they did. And when I asked why, I couldn't find anybody who knew until I went to this person who had been with them forever. Um, and she said, well, there was this company and she named it. I remember them. And they went out of business. But before they went out of business, they needed this done. So the person in charge at that time had us do it for everybody. So basically, we were doing an extra step on 6,000 customers a day for a company that no longer was in business. Now, it sounds stupid, but I see these kind of things everywhere. You need to sit down and put together standardized procedures, which I'm not going to talk about here, but they're easy to do, and we teach that too. Next, you need to look, see if any jobs should be eliminated and, res and responsibilities shifted to someone else in the department. Can a job be outsourced? You know, a lot of times you hire somebody, you got a piece, of, you got something that needs to be done, but it's not a 40-hour job, so you run around trying to fill the rest of the time, all right? So can a job be outsourced? Has anyone per been performing work that lies well outside his assigned responsibilities? Make sure that they're working in an area that makes sense to you, okay? Do all positions require full-time workers or can they be filled by part-time workers or seasonal workers? Don't feel like you've got to be locked into that, okay? See if you need to hire em additional employees so that critical jobs are staffed correctly, all right? Be honest about it. That's the other thing that'll happen. You know, I've seen it. You got three people that are really not doing a job you need, but you need this job done, and nobody you have, including the three people not really doing what you need, have those skill sets. So now you got a choice. You're either going to train them up, and I've done that. Uh, when I was at Coca Cola again, I'll use them as an example. Um, we didn't have an HR department. My secretary, I didn't need a secretary really. We sent her to get trained to be an HR person. She went out and got a master's in HR and and many times was making more money than I was as I was struggling to get a firm off the ground. <laughs> Made me wonder if I didn't have the right career. Look, don't get lazy. Don't dodge the tough decisions. The key to running a profitable business is keeping your cost under control while you're increasing sales. But first, get your cost under control. That way, when you increase sales, it goes to the bottom line, not to feed everybody else. All right? Look, until next time, this is Wayne Belisle saying, let's make this our most profitable year ever. Thank you very much.